they leave. They are considered traitors. They are hunted down on their way out of the country, and they make it to America. While this is happening on the East Coast, they discover Godzilla is still alive. Now, this Godzilla is Minla from the ending of G and KK. But he's fully grown, and he's Godzilla. And so they find him, and he's sailing for the eastern coast again. And the military has these new missiles that they've hooked up on their destroyers and all of their ships. And they make a blockade around the entire eastern coast. And then they start shooting at Godzilla. Godzilla breaks through the Armada. What else are they going to do? And then he lands somewhere in New Jersey, in, in no major city, and just walks up. You know, and it's just they're keeping an eye on him. He's doing major destruction for several towns and several cities. And then, in a totally emotional scene, he comes across the destruction of Manhattan. And I want it to almost parallel the exact same shot before Godzilla went supernova in G and KK as in this where all of a sudden he walks and there's like this huge crater now in the center of the city and Godzilla is walking in there and there's sad music that is playing and Godzilla is just like looking around and I want there to be close-ups on his eyes where you can tell he's remembering it and you can tell that he is just saddened by all the memories that he's had of this place. And he comes across these humans, and it's like he's looking to kill them, but he doesn't. He just walks away into the ocean. Now, I don't really know about the main characters, to be honest, other than the Russian character. I don't really know too much about the main characters, because I haven't even started even writing it, uh, writing it out. And all I know is that Godzilla's going to go back to the ocean, the Russians link up with the president, tell him what the hell is going on. It infuriates the president. But then he realizes that this is too great of an option that I cannot refuse. And in order to save lives of American people, I'm going to need to listen to him. And the Russian scientists, as well as a few other American generals, and that Russian general, go out and say, okay, the best way we could deal with this plant is to send Godzilla over there. Because, technically, they're related. The scientists used some of Minla's father's cells in the plant. Therefore, part of Minla's father is in the plant, meaning that Minla, now Godzilla, and the plant that they've named Biolante, are nearly, are related, or nearly the same creature. Therefore, it will attract Godzilla over there. And so that's what's going to wind up happening, is in this lake, all of a sudden this large plant comes out of it, and, you know, the military's freaking out, and there's roots, they do like this exca ex excavation, and they discover that Biolante's roots are everywhere in the United States or everywhere on the western coast, all the way up into Canada, into Alaska, all the way down into Mexico, in the Mexico area. It has spread like crazy. And so my idea was that in LA, they discovered that these roots are growing up the buildings and they ha they've had to evacuate the entire city. And because of that, a dam broke and it's flooded LA and suddenly the roots come to life with these like crocodile mouths on them and start attacking the military units that are there which are just soldiers helping people get away and people are getting eaten by this creature and then the military circle the lake where the main body of Biolante is and they shoot at it and do all this and do all that and they wind up burning it and they think it kills it but almost immediately after Godzilla arrives on the western coast being called, like the scientists predicted, like the scientists predicted, Godzilla is called over and lands up in Washington, up in the Washington area, looking badass as possible, and and they discover 
that the thing that they just burned was not the main body of Biolante. The main body of Biolante is up in the Redwood Forest somewhere. And they, the military basically follows Godzilla. Godzilla isn't even paying attention to the military. Godzilla is paying attention to the fact that this plant is calling him. And he's almost like he has a connection to it. And so when Godzilla discovers it, by, you see nothing. You just see a bunch of uprooted trees and these new, like, gigantic roots all over the place. But then all of a sudden, he, I want him to, like, let out a call. And then all of a sudden, the, the ground under him, like, gives wet, underneath him gets wet. He topples over and rolls down this hill. And the military are starting to set up, wanting to know what's happening. And then, all of a sudden, Biolante comes out. The, the true cro large crocodile mouth. Biolante, and the fight is going to be epic. Godzilla gets hurt. I want there to be several scenes where Godzilla is bitten by the crocodile mouths of the, like the little roots and everything, and he bleeds because of it. I, I'm not going to make him have yellow blood like in Godzilla vs. Biolante. Honestly, I didn't like that. I would have made the blood red because Godzilla is still a creature from this earth. And, you know, despite all the times that Godzilla uses his atomic breath, against Biolante, because it's a plant, it keeps taking other things and healing itself. Almost like how Godzilla, whenever he's hit by a shell, is able to regenerate off of himself, but off of other cells. And so I thought that was, I thought that, I, that that was a great parallel into explaining how they are related. And so eventually Godzilla wins, and he fries Biolante, and in that process he walks out into the sea, and that's the end of, uh, walks out into the sea. And while everybody is watching Godzilla walk out into the sea, suddenly the Russian scientist and the Russian general are shot. And their funeral, I think, is the end of the film. They are shot. The assassin is never revealed, but I wanted to get it across to the audience that it was a Russian assassin that was paid by the government in order to shoot uh, the scientist and that renegade general. Um, so that's the end of that one. Uh, tell me what you think. Tell me what you know. Or tell me what do you think I should add on. Tell me, you know, I'm honestly debating. I think Godzilla should attack Boston. But I'm not sure. This movie isn't really, if you look at it, it doesn't really have Godzilla too much in it. That's the deal. Um, that's my issue, is that I don't feel like I have enough Godzilla into it. And other than that one scene where he is just saddened by the destruction of Manhattan and remembering what the bad things that happened there, I don't feel like Godzilla has enough character in this movie. The next two films are what really start developing Godzilla's character. Now, the next film, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to call it, but it's going to start evolving off of Ishiro Hana's idea of world peace, which I'm a Republican, and I'm all for nationality and everything like that, but Godzilla is a uh, crisis that faces the world. And, you know, a perfect example of that is um, during the Japanese earthquake. During the Japanese earthquake, uh, people uh, all got together to help Japan. Even China did it. And China hated Japan for doing what they did in China during World War II. And the fact that China was able to forgive Japan enough to go over there and help them during their time of crisis totally spoke to me that world peace is kind of possible. There should still be borders. Don't think I don't think that there should be borders. But that it is possible for us to look past our differences and we can work together for a common cause. Now, the idea for this one, um, it begins almost like Reptilicus. If you've seen Reptilic, if you haven't seen Reptilicus, just watch the opening. It is opening. It is epic as hell. Um, but it's these scientists up in uh, North Pole, and they're no, should be in the North Pole. I think I'm gonna, it's either gonna be Greenland or it's gonna be in Antarctica. It's gonna be one or the two, either far north or far south. 
the far north, the far south. And what has happened is that these scientists are digging and drilling and digging and drilling, and they're getting places and they're saying, hey, cool, these are new isotopes, and they're doing all this crap, they're doing all that, they're doing all that scientific crap. But then one drilling, they lift it up, and there's blood on it. There's blood on the drill, and the scientist looks at it, sniffs, and said, it's blood. And then comes the epic opening titles, which I'm going to use Akira Ifakube's Space Amoeba theme to it. And so they dig it, they dig up what caused the blood and discover that is it's this large aquatic looking creature with a larger neck, two legs, and it has three fingers. And they look at it and realize that it is a Titanosaurus. And so this causes a huge frenzy in the scientific world. And then while, while this is happening, with it causing a scientific frenzy in the world, Godzilla attacks Hong Kong. And totally destroys Hong Kong, leaving it flat. Um, and I want there to be several scenes where it's a close-up on Godzilla's eyes, and he's furious. And... My idea was that Godzilla has been damned into doing this. And not only the fact that he's been damned because he's mutated, different from everything else of its original species, but because I want him to be angry for the loss of his father. Now, I... You see, that's going to be an issue. I'm afraid people are going to look at that and say, Hey, that's way too humanistic for Godzilla. Now, I'm not going to capitalize on it. I just want Godzilla to almost have... I want... I don't want Godzilla to have total feelings. Like, he's still territorial. And he's still a monster that's destroying cities. But I want him to have feelings. You know? He's hurt because his father was killed. And so he's taking out his rage on us. He's angry because he's the last member of his species, therefore he's taking even more anger out on us. So that explains why he attacks cities and everything like that. And what winds up happening is that there's this UN meeting uh, that's talking about uh, how can we stop Godzilla, and the scientists bring up the fact that they have discovered a Titanosaurus that still has skin on it because it's been frozen. They did some DNA testing on it, and they said all the other skeletons we've discovered of this Titanosaurus have dated over 150 million years ago. This one dates only a thousand years ago, which means that they didn't die off until not long ago. And so my idea was that the world starts, I don't really know how I'm going to do this, but there's like this huge UN meeting, and I'm sort of taking this off of the, uh, Shiro Honda some Mysterians. And there's this huge world meeting, and scientists say we've been playing around with this mind control device that we can implant into someone's brain and we're able to control them which gets somewhat of a negative opinion in the scientific community which honestly I do it but honestly I would be against it as well but they look at the situation that the world is in and realize that this if used for good can be a great weapon to use against Godzilla and so when they use and so they start playing around with it, and they get it to what they want. They, they talk it over with the UN, and, the UN, and they say, if we can revive Titanosaurus, implant this into its brain, and give it some G-cells, which, that was actually how they're going to revive it. They're going to inject it with G-cells, and that would revive it, because it worked for Biolanti, therefore it would work for Titanosaurus. And the UN is like, yes, we'll do it. And I want there to be several scenes where they're having surgery on Titanosaurus's brain. And I want there to be several scenes where totally countries that hate each other, like uh, countries that are hating each other, are working together for the common good of the world. And this, and then they, I want there to be this one scene where a surgeon from Israel and a surgeon from Pakistan are right next to each other, helping each other. You know, I think that would speak for the message that not only I want to get out of this movie, but what I think Ishiro Honda would have wanted to get out of this movie. 